Yes, yes, everyone. Welcome back to another video. Uh, I'm here with none other than the man himself, Big Steve. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, good. Good to be here. Uh, on the back of a defeat, uh, which is not always the best, but um, good to be here. Yeah. Um, we're going to go through, like, obviously Madrid. We'll have a look at Chelsea. Um, we might touch on transfers if we have time for transfers and stuff. Um, usually be a live show, things like that, with the Big Steve show, but for record this one, get it out today before Chelsea and that. It's a, it's a good time to do it. If you haven't already, do us a favour, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, trying to bring you some different kind of content with uh, multiple camera angles and that. <laughs> um, but I guess there's only one place to start. We'll get the, I say bad talk out of the way, but um, what are your thoughts coming out of, out of Wednesday? I've, I've, I've... Listen, it's hard to be mad at them because um, over two legs, we, 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 we tried our best. We went to the Bernabeu and we give it a goal. Um, and then at home the other night, we give it a goal. We couldn't get through. But I feel like we just, we let Madrid off the hook over two legs. I feel like we didn't do enough mm. to win the game. Um, it's all right having possession. It's all right forcing the game. But we've got to unpick the lock. You know what I mean? And what I think is this season... Um, the final third has not been the same as last season. Mm. I think there's a couple of key issues. Riyad Mahrez, Ilkay Gundogan, players like that. We had to come off the bench and unlock unlock games. I don't think we have that now. You know what I mean? We, we we've seen in recent matches that Erling Haaland and and the, and the team it's not linking up right. So I think there's a there's a whole lot of factors in it. Uh, overall, we tried our best. We went for it. We didn't. We didn't. Um, disgrace ourselves but we, we didn't get the job done and at the end of the day Real Madrid were there for the taking so I think the players and the manager is going to be disappointed yeah I think my my I've said this quite a few times my thing coming out of it was more it's annoying that we didn't get beat by the better team it, well, it's not like we're going, we've gone out not to a better team it's not like Real Madrid turned upon the day and yes I, I'd that would stress me out more if we turn upon the day and Real Madrid were better than us because I believe that we are a better side than Real Madrid however just the fact that they weren't the better side and still went through it. It almost feels like a little bit unfair, but when you let it go to penalties, that's obviously it's a lottery at that point. You can you've got to look at the goals we conceded. Yeah, two in the burn about were, were terrible. Four. Yeah? yeah, we get our noses back in front and then we concede late on. It was a great goal. So we're going away from the burn about with a result that we all said before the game we'd take. Let's take a draw back to the Etihad and beat them at the Etihad. We get to the Etihad. And we gave them a goal and that killed us because then they had something to hold on to. They dug in deep. Um, Kevin De Bruyne missed a few chances, but it just didn't It just didn't flow the same this season in the Champions League. I don't yeah. know what it is. Last season, it just felt like everyone was together. You know, we were, we were going and I don't think anyone could stop us. But this year, I just feel like the defence and the way we're playing, there's something missing. Um, I addressed it on a stream of mine the other day that um, there's an Erling Haaland problem. And whether people like it or not, there is a problem. We've got the best number nine in the world. We're not playing for him. People are saying, yeah, but he needs to get involved more and stuff. I don't think he does because last season we, we proved that if, you, if you've if you got that player that can unlock and play them balls in like Gundogan did and things like that, he scores goals. I feel like Jack Grealish is getting to the final third and, 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 and there's no crosses coming in. I think Jeremy Doku, he's very, very raw. We know that, but... Um, I'm gutted because I'm looking at who's left in the Champions League and thinking we're better than all of them. We should have won. I agree. Again. You know what I mean? And that's the problem. I think everyone's frustrated. Yeah. It's a, uh, I think at the moment as well, there's a lot of reactionary stuff coming out. Mm. Um, but I think because if you take the Carabao Cup out, out, out of it and Community Shield out of it, and obviously Carabao Cup is a I love the Carabao Cup. Mm. I always want to win it. Uh, but if you take those out of it, We've not we've not felt this for a long time. Obviously, it was Real Madrid last time when they knocked us out. Yeah, we've not felt this kind of this pain of going like to the last stages and getting knocked out for a bit. Obviously, because of last year's treble win. So I feel like it does feel a little bit raw, and I think it's okay to like feel gutted after the match. Um, personally, I'm proud of the way that we played because we dominate after their goal. I think that if if you look at the first half and our twenty minutes or so, you could see both sides really didn't want to be the team to go at it. It was a bit yeah. of nerves in there, respect yeah. for each other a little bit too much. Um, and then when they got their goal then, which I don't think they expected in their game plan, yeah. I don't think they was expecting to go at 1-0 up at any point, or, or so early. They just instantly switched like that. They was like, right, okay, let's hold this now. Um, 
And it was all about us then trying to break them down. I know Kyle Walker was at fault for their goal, but yeah. I, I, I think he... He made I, up for it in the game. He made up for it, like, yeah. going further throughout the game. I think they said he had a really strong second half. I feel like there was the one-on-one -on -one with Vinny as well, yeah. um, where Vinny ended up pulling up. He did really well there. And that's basically why we needed Kyle Walker in that game. But I think there's, it's, there's positives to take because of how we played against a side like Real Madrid. But it's just upsetting that we had to go out to that Real Madrid side, isn't it? Like... And, and what what happens is when you get beat, everyone starts looking for different answers. So people have got their own theories and that. You know, I've heard mm. Arlen's no good. Yeah. Kevin De Bruyne's finished. Yeah. Uh, we need to play with Alvarez as a false nine. We, yeah. we play better with this. We play better with that. And at the end of the day, it's all uh, said in the emotion. At the end of the day, if you take the season overall this season, we haven't been our best. But we find ourselves top of the Premier League with six mm. games to go. You know, we're taking that. So I feel like yeah, this year we, we didn't quite have enough to do it. It happens. We, there's been years when in the Champions League when we've been favourites. We've gone out to Leon, we've gone out to Spurs. Mm -hmm. They hurt a little bit more than this. But at yeah. the end of the day, we're top of the league and we're in FA Cup semi-final. Um, I'm a bit worried about the semi-final because I think our players looked dead on the feet the other night. Yeah. There was a few people holding the groin and stuff like that. Um, and we've got some tough trips coming up. But listen, if anyone can go and win these two cups now, it's City and... Uh, I think we've all just got to get behind them and, uh, you know, from where it was a few weeks ago when it was in Liverpool's hands, it was in Arsenal's hands, now all of a sudden it's our, in our hands. You know, I think you can't ask for better than that at the minute. Yeah, it look, you mentioned there that our season this season, I think one of the, one of the key issues as well has been finishing our chances, mm -hmm. uh, which goes back to Erling Haaland. Uh, it goes back to the fact that we're not playing, I feel like we're not playing to his strengths anyway, especially in recent times. And then, but then Haaland himself has to hold his hands up a little bit as well. There is some times where yeah. he's been through one on one and you're looking, even shooting uh, straight at the keeper. Yeah, the Luton game. Yeah. The Luton game is, should have finished first time. Obviously, it was early boy. He ended up getting the goal. Well, yeah. obviously, it was an own goal. Um, very fortunate, but he should have finished that. And we've seen that kind of same situation multiple times this mm. season. So he'll be disappointed in that fact. But then also, I think a little bit of lies on Pep and the way that we play football right now isn't suiting like Haaland. He, 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 People coming out saying, oh, he's being used to uh, fight with the centre-backs, keep the centre-backs away from the midfield, leave yeah, the yeah. space for Foden, everyone to go in there. But that's fine. But Phil Foden, for example, he's playing central, he's scoring goals. Kev comes back, he's playing wide. And you're like, we didn't have Kevin De Bruyne in the burner bow. Mm -hmm. um, why not just... Leave Kev on the bench and start. Yeah, run it back. Yeah, another, exact you know, same if you, need, you need Kevin De Bruyne last twenty minutes or bring second on, half yeah. facing the south stand. Bring on a fresh Kevin De Bruyne because um, I feel like others could have done a little bit of a job first half. We didn't have to go gung ho. Um, and Kevin's struggling with that injury. No matter what anyone says, mm. every two games now he's pulling up with it or he's tweaking it or we're resting him. So I know people don't want to hear it, but I feel like Kev's obviously the age and everything's creeping up with him. That injury is obviously not right. Um, and I think the plan going forward has got to be Phil Foden to take over the Kevin De Bruyne place for me. Could, this is something that Pep doesn't really want to risk, but something that I really want him to do Together. is them two in the midfield. Because I, Bernardo Silva, I think, play, plays really well on the right wing. Yeah, he does. And in the midfield, Bernardo Silva, and this is his whole career at City, never gets your numbers. He never gets your... No. The GNA isn't there. Yeah, he gets goals throughout the season, obviously, but him getting assists from the middle of the, middle of the park just doesn't happen. So I think I'd get in Phil Foden in there where we know he's playing well. But Arnold Silva can play right wing. I'm happy for them to interchange throughout the match and be a bit fluid with it. But I just think starting with Phil Foden as the 10, you could even dr drop Kev a little bit deeper. I think we've got a better number 10 sat there on, on the left wing. Yeah, Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish. In my opinion, I feel like that's that, know, that's the biggest wasted sign in that. Like, not wasted sign in that sense because I think he's done really well at City. But... I think it's a missed opportunity to never oh, have played Jack in Grealish late, in, in late mid. games. Jack Grealish in a ten, going left, going right, shooting, getting the fouls, winning the free kicks, doing all that. I think it be that's his game. That I think some of the best games that you've seen Grealish in is when he um, when he drives tired. forward. Yeah, <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> I've got a cat in the room. <laughs> Jack, Grealish, I just I just think Jack Grealish in the ten would do bits, and some of the best games that we've seen Jack Grealish play, like. For example, United, when we played against United, yeah. really should c come inside. And when they, when they allow him that space, he di dictates the play. Of course. 
I, I, I just think we should have we should have at least tried that a it's, few it's times. It's tough in it because you don't want to undermine your manager. Um, but we are entitled to an opinion. We pay our money. We go and watch them week in and week out. And it is good to discuss it. We're not slagging anyone off, but it's just like yeah. sometimes, why not? You know what I mean? Sometimes in games, I think to myself, why don't you swap wings for yeah. a bit? You know what I mean? It's not working. Yeah. If it's not working, switch it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jeremy don't... Doku, for me, plays better on the right. Yeah, so he's been recently, he has been switching it. Yeah. Like yeah. So we've seen Jeremy Doku coming on this right-hand side and maybe like just not for a full game, but then... Just for a little bit, trying them right, and I, I, I agree. I think he's been playing really well off that right yeah. side. It's and it's just it's just frustrating because I feel like they were there for the taking and we just fell up short. But I think I think what's happened is, um, I don't think he's got the creativity in the middle of the park mm-hmm. to to unlock Harland. I feel like we are playing Harland's playing so high. There's no space in behind, but he's sacrificing the space in behind to cr- create the space in front. So yeah. Fold and Bernardo, De Bruyne can all get it. But for me, if I'm Carlo Ancelotti and Ruben Diaz, Manuel Akanji, Guardiol and Kyle Walker are on the edge of my box with a ball, I'm fine with that. I'm absolutely fine I'm with absolutely that. fine with that. Because in my opinion, I say let Manchester City think they've got control. Mm-hmm. But in, in reality, Guardiol, Akanji ain't threading that through ball through. If you've got Bernardo Silva, Phil Fold and Kevin De Bruyne yeah, on the edge, they're the, box, the ones on the edge. You're fucking panicking because yeah. A, they can ping it in the top bag. B, they're threading that ball through. C, they mm-hmm. can twist you up and, and and get through. So I feel like Pep's sometimes got this obsession about possession and thinking, oh yeah, we're dominating the game. But are we really dominating the game? Because Ancelotti is probably thinking, you can think you're dominating, mate, but we're comfortable here. Yeah, we're, we're, up, we're happy with side. this. Yeah, yeah. We're letting you pass it along, and like, and there's nobody can damage us. Where I think last season. You bring on Riyad Mahrez, mm. he can trap the ball from anywhere. He cuts inside, he goes on the outside, and then you've got Ilkay Gundo and arriving late. Yeah, running goals. late, yeah. And yeah. I feel like that was something we had in our locker last season that we opposition teams didn't need in the last minute. Now you're looking at our bench and you're thinking, okay, we bring on Alvarez, but we're taking off Ireland. Mm. And then you're thinking we can move forward into the middle. But once Real Madrid was settled and dug deep and they had the noses in front, I feel like they were comfortable and and they took it to penalties. Like you say, it was a lottery. It was a 50, 50. We're not the best at penalties. We know that. You know, I, I don't, I don't think we practice penalties. No, we got a I'm sure I've seen a pep call ages ago saying that we genuinely don't. Edison's the best penalty taker. That, that, that footage had come out before Porto in the 2021 final when he was smashing the top corner. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, and Bernardo Silva, you know, we love him and he's been fantastic. But if you, if you've got him in a room now and said, what the fucking hell was you doing there? He'd probably say foot nose. He's seen in his head. I'm going to run up, dink it, keep a dive, it's going to dink it, everyone's going to go, fucking hell, what a penalty. Yeah. But um, we've got to remember this, yeah? If Man City win that penalty shootout, the Spanish newspaper, Marsa, the Madrid paper, and all the outlets in Spain will slag Real Madrid off. How can a Real Madrid team play like that, defend like that? Mm-hmm. How can they do that? The Real Madrid champions of Europe, it's a disgrace. They win the penalty shootout like they did. Absolutely fantastic performance. Best you've ever seen. Magical defensive display. Yeah. But really, we know that it is where it is. But listen, we've done it twice in the last two weeks. We've had two teams come to the Etihad, dig deep and defend, Mm. and both of them have done a job. So Arsenal and and Madrid. So, you know, he's got to come up with a formula. He's got to come up with something to get them going now for six games. We've got six games to win the Premier League. The thing, obviously, there's, there's, like I said, there's like just over a month left now. Mm. I don't know, it might not, it might be four weeks. Um the ta- the, the time for that the the formation changes, the risks, the kind of the experiments, I, I feel like that's done. Yeah. I feel like now you really need to just decide on your best eleven. Yeah. You need to be very consistent, obviously, barring injuries and, and, and fitness. And you need to just stick to a, a way and go for that week in, week out. Now, if that's folding in the midfield, that's folding in the midfield if Kev's been a little bit inconsistent in and out of it then I'm fine with that. I just think Pep needs to figure it out. Just from- I've got no problem me going to uh, Brighton on a Thursday night, dropping Kevin De Bruyne, dropping Erling Haaland, mm-hmm. starting off nice and slow, mm-hmm. get growing into the game. If we nick it and we win in a couple of goals and we don't have to bring them to one, great. That's, that's meant bonus. Yeah. If we think, you know what, it's getting to like 70 minutes here, we, we need, need to bring we the, need the difference. On, get them yeah. on and win it, do it that way. You know, they, they, they both have to come off. Kevin was holding his hamstring, which, you know, he's had an operation six months out. And Haaland's had this foot injury. Um, but if he's had a foot injury, why are we playing him against Luton at home? 
You know, this is my thing. Why are you playing against Luton at home? Um, I think Ireland's suffering from a little bit of confidence issue. I feel like I the, body, the body language is not there. Yeah. I feel he, like he looks season, very frustrated. Yeah, last season he was like Harlan, Harlan. He was giving it. He was to giving crowd, it a big and he was smashing people, getting the crowd up and all that. He just feels like he's a little bit laboured. And let's not forget, it's, it feels flat with Harlan at the moment. He's a like, young lad. Yeah, yeah. And the standards he set himself last season was so so high. I think that puts so much the, pressure on. Yeah, because the pressure was already there from the off because he's early in Harland and he's this big talent. Any and you've other got striker to do in the Premier League stops now at Harlan's goals, whatever it is in the league, twenty. It's a great season. Yeah, twenty goal, a twenty goal season striker is a great striker. It's great, but but with him, he's he, he's he's no, it's not. It's he, you know he's behind his total. But I get it. But I just think, I I said the other night on my show, if I'm Alfie Ireland, I'm getting in at pre season. We're having a sit down with Pep, and I'm saying, look, you know, my son's one of the best number nines in the world. He don't look like he's enjoying his football. What's mm. the plan? If Pep turns around and says, look, I'm gonna we have, didn't have the players to to, to yeah, lock. Yeah. I'm going to sign a Paqueta. I'm Paqueta, going to sign yeah, yeah. Say, oh, look, we're going to lose Bernardo, whatever. This is how we're going to play next season. These two playmakers in front, a bit like uh, Iniesta, Javi playing like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Then I, I'm, I'm convinced early in Ireland, you know, his future lies at City. But if, if Pep's with this way of playing, I, I, I don't see how if, it's going to end. If he doubles down on this style, I think Haaland will reconsider his future for when he's, I don't think he'll leave this summer no. uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he'll be looking at after this contract, he might go, yeah, I, I might not renew and go it's somewhere It's just frustrating else, for us as fans to know that you've got the best number nine in the world and if he's in any other team in the world, that it, team it will move and shift and the main focus To play to be. him. Yeah. But we don't. We don't do that. We, all about, we don't do that for anyone. No, we don't. And this is the fact, this is all about the team. And... um we can't moan because of the trophies we're winning. We can't. Yeah. But we are allowed to feel frustrated. I come away from some city games frustrated. Yeah. And it's not and, and we've won, but I'm frustrated. Yeah. I don't know why it is. I mean mates, they go, Oh, you're spoiled and that. And yeah, maybe we are spoiled, but we are entitled to you know, we are entitled to have an opinion on it. But I just don't want to see a man like Harland who last season fucking destroyed football for us and give us so much glory look like he is at the minute. You know what I mean? You want to see him like enjoying his football, doing bits, like obviously scoring goals week in, week out. And yeah, like it is at the moment, it's a little bit inconsistent for him. As much as we say this, he has got over 30 goals a season in all competitions, which is still great. I mean, I think any any team in the Premier, if you said that 30 goals a season, would be like, yep, sign me up, I'll get him. Um, but we just know he's better than that. And he knows he's better than that. Like I say, the amount of chances that we've seen him miss, he knows he's better than that. And he'll be frustrated with both Real Madrid performances. He doesn't want to be used as a make-weight for space for others. You might as well go and sign Akin Fenwa. And just stick, and stick him, up, him top. up front and say, smash fuck out of him, hold on to him, <laughs> rag him about, throw him on the floor, keep that eye line. You know, and basically that's what people are saying is happening now. And it's just weird. But um, I think, I just think Pep, as I look at him, he's not got the players yeah, to I, thread that ball through. I think he, like, we know how much City wanted Paqueta. Obviously, the 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 ban, rather the... You look at the treble documentary, ban. how many times Gundogan slotted that ball through. Yeah. You know, you look at Rodri as Gundogan well. and Haaland's link-up was so good. Yeah. Rodri ain't doing it. No. Kovacic ain't doing Kovacic's it. Kovacic's definitely not doing it. You know, the only ones you've got in there is a Foden and De Bruyne, and only one plays. So if you sit on him in a game... And you, you stop that supply. You can mark, you mark whoever that is out of the game. And then you think, right, yeah, but we've got two wingers. But the two wingers don't cross. Yeah, they don't. So they come back inside. So Harlan last year was making these runs. Now he's not doing it because he knows that there's no point in me running they because they ain't the ball ain't in. coming in. Yeah, yeah. And what, what's more frustrating is when we when we bring Alvarez on, yeah. like uh, against Real Madrid, we start putting the ball in. And I'm thinking, who are you he's doing right. that to? Harlan's already off the pitch. You should have been doing this throughout the match. Uh, that, that's that's where that's where it confuses me, and uh, I think only well, that's Pep... why Pep's a genius. Yeah, and we're here talking about that, it, and that's why we're sat here and Pep's <laughs> Pep's managing Manchester. Um, but obviously, moving on from Madrid, um, are you are you over it yet? Are you over it? Like, Listen, quick? you know what? Right, I'm, old, I'm I, I class myself as a little bit old school now at City, and I've seen a lot, and it doesn't affect me when I was young really affected me, like, like yeah. really bad. Like, I'd, I'd, I'd be fucking, I'd just be a nightmare and I'd just be like, it'd really get on my mind. But now, 
I'm just a great. I just think it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? That that, that was my mentality because I, when I when, when I was young, I used to be like, I couldn't play FIFA. I couldn't and look you know, at Sky come Sports up to me news. Time at the match the other night and said to me, "Getting off me," and I went, "What?" And he went, "Getting off watching that shit." I went, "How old are you?" And he went, "22." And I went, and you think that shit? I said, you wouldn't have fucking lasted five minutes. I said, I remember coming to the Etihad, yeah, getting beat off a team that didn't have a shot. We got beat 1-0 off Bolton. They didn't have a shot. We scored an own goal. And I remember coming out of there thinking, we're fucking cursed. So this guy's playing Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. So he's getting off because it's a He's play, playing one of the best teams in world know, football ever. Funny, I, I feel like there's a whole generation of City fans that if we ever have a, a little wobble and we're like fourth or fifth, they're just going to have meltdowns. They're going to freak out. City's going to have to set up a, like, a, a trauma hotline <laughs> yeah. for this younger generation. Yeah. You know I mean? Talk to Moonbeam. Like, yeah. I mean, put old classic videos on of City winning the treble to keep calm everyone. <laughs> to down. calm down. Have little, you know I mean? have little rooms at matches where they can go to to you know, chill imagine out. Imagine watching Jamie Pollock lo- lobbing it over your defender's <laughs> head and then heading it over your goalie. Oh, like, your own goal. And relegating your, you know, like, yeah. not, not just like knocking, falling off his knee and going in. Like a proper Gascoigne Euro yeah. 96 goal. Uh, to relegate you in your own net, but no, it does make me laugh. But no, I'm not. I'm not. Listen, I'm not upset. We we can't be upset anyway because we've got a job to do. That's the thing. We're that... straight back on the horse. We're at Wembley at weekend. There's no point moping. We've got to get the boys over the line. Get to the FA Cup final. There is abs. I said this yesterday. There is absolutely no time to dwell on going out of the Champions League. No. You've got a semi final to go to, yeah. and then I mean, which is a massive opportunity to get to to go again in Wembley and get into the final, another competition, and then we were top of the Premier League that we need to keep up. Yeah. Like there is no, got, uh, there's no rest. I feel like uh, Saturday was going to be hard anyway because I think Chelsea's been brilliant against those last two games. I yeah, think. and and recently Chelsea have looked like they're I in just, good I form. I just feel like they're, they're a nightmare for everything we've got. They, they have the the Conor Gallagher, Caicedo, Fernandez midfield, mm-hmm. which is just hanging. Grim. So that just like tries to swarm all over Rodri and that stop him getting the ball. Then they have obviously Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer. Point to prove. Yeah, and, they and he's scoring for fun now. Mudrick and that. Mudrick you know and I mean? everyone. Jackson who's shit, but all the shit ones always come out the woodwork against us. For some reason, I, it, it stinks of Jackson scoring. Yeah, and it's, but it, it, and it just, it's just one of them things. Where, you know, in seasons, you get teams where you just, they've got your number a little bit. And I feel like Chelsea have got that. I yeah. feel like they're fresh and I feel like they've got nothing to play for, so they're going to go for it. We've just got to be on our guard and, and, and we can't feel sorry for ourselves. And I bet there was a few walking around yesterday with lips out and that, like, sulking, but we can't do it. You're in the semi-final of the of the FA Cup. We've got to go and win it. And then we've got six games to win the Premier League. That's basically the, the be on and end all of it all. Yeah. Well, they, obviously, this was the same in the Champions League was the thing, but all I really thought about it uh, yesterday was the next trophy that we can lift is the Premier League. Yeah. Like, so we... There is... <laughs> And we're so close to the end of this season that there's 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 just no point dwelling on that Real Madrid game. I understand the players are going to be upset about going out, but you've still got two trophies to win. It's still a successful season. If we win this Premier League four in a row, you know it's never been done. It's, it's sensational and it's just unreal what what we're doing at the football club. Um, it's like I woke up and messages like, "Ha, where's your treble gone?" And I'm like, "Listen." It, it, no Man City fan was talking about the treble. The treble is such a, a unique thing in football, right? Do not people f- these idiots online are throwing this treble about like it's nothing. Ah, where's your double treble gone? It's like it's not even worth your. Uh, it's not even worth a reply. It's just it's pathetic. You know what I mean? Uh, the thing is, you should, a treble isn't normal. But rival fans are trying to normalise a double because, treble. Yeah, because Never like, mind a single treble. They're trying to normalise a double treble to, ten, to then use it against you. fans saying, ah, you've gone out of the cup. It's not for everyone. I'm like, are you not losing 3-0 to Atalanta, mate? Yeah, in and the, then went out in, last night. In the, in the, in the Europa in, League. Europa League, that, that when City was in it, it was a Channel 5 cup and no one Yeah, yeah shit, no one cares about it. It's, it's, it's a top European trophy. Top European trophy that Klopp must win. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I'm like... Listen, we're always going to be that. When you're top of the mountain, everyone wants to throw stones and knock you off. Um, we dust ourselves off and we've all got to stick together. We don't want these fa- uh, online fractions where everyone's going off on these tangents and we're all arguing about stuff. There's no point. We've just got to go there at weekend and get the results. It's a result business now. Dig deep. You know, there's some lads there that have uh, didn't play at weekend. Nathan Ake and that are obviously going to start. Maybe Kovacic will yeah, start. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think 
A back us. I don't know how fit the team will be. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? We'll have to wait till the press conference, obviously, which is it's today at the time of recording this. It's been a couple of hours. Um, we'll have to wait and see what comes out of that. But I, there's no reason not to back us with what we've done no. in the past. And I think fans just need to get behind the team again. Like, yes, it's upsetting to go out the Champions League. But like we're saying, the season's far from over. Yeah. There's still too much really trophies good, to we, we, Listen, we had a brilliant weekend last weekend where... Mm-hmm. Perfect weekend last uh, weekend. Arsenal, Liverpool drop points, so it's like he's put us right in the mix. Um, Arsenal are on the back of slipping up at home to Aston Villa, mm-hmm. going out to, to Finger. That's but, a real you know, fall the, off. And, uh, and the thing is with them, they know that this happened last season, so that's ticking around in there. Yeah, the, the mentality for them yeah. isn't there. They've not got over that line yet. We, so then We know that we can win the FA Cup and we can yeah. win the Premier League, and we know that we're in a great position. So it's just players like Rodri, uh, uh, Ruben Diaz, uh, Stones, uh, Walker, the senior players have got to, the leaders in the team have got to come together now and pick everybody up and say, look, this isn't the time to feel sorry for ourselves. This is the time to get back at it and, and get this one. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, right, do you want to give a score prediction? Or are you, uh, this uh, I think I think we'll win 2-1. I think just, I think... Um, We'll get it over the line, but it's going to be tough. I do think Chelsea will score. I don't think on that. I think on that pitch is massive as well. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the most difficult games of the season. This. I think it will be. Yeah, it's right up there. Pimple and banter in Chelsea, but like you say, they're a bit hit and miss. One minute you watch them and you think, "Fucking hell, they're terrible," and then you watch them again and you think, "Jesus!" I watched them against Everton and uh, they were uh, they were brilliant. You know what I mean? But. You know, it's a semi-final, anything can happen. We've just got to get there, get behind the lads and that, and no excuses, you know, and just keep going. Yeah. Wise words. Um, right, that's it, everyone. Big up for um, everyone who's watching. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Hit like on this video. Uh, comment below. Let us know your thoughts on everything that we've been speaking about today. Chelsea, obviously, massive game tomorrow. Uh, get your score predictions in the comments. Big up to Big Steve. Uh, go check out his socials. Um, yeah, I mean, you're always posting on your socials, mate. Yeah, I'm trying. I don't do enough, to be fair, on my own channel. But um, a couple of t- uh, shows, Title Talk with Turkish. Talk, Turkish yeah, yeah. It's a good little show. Liverpool fan, Arsenal fan. I don't think they want to talk about the title, though, this week. You know, been <laughs> yeah, they will not want to be talking about that. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, and there's a few little bits knocking about. TikTok, I'm doing a bit of TikTok now. Um, oh, look at you now. Do a few lives on there, have a bit of banter and that, but um, yeah, it's what it is. But yeah, you know where I am.